Gaster Peterson from Denmark. He's coming to Belgium in uh, September to do a training here. But first, let us meet Martin Gaster Peterson and see who he is. Hey, Martin. Uh, welcome <laughs> Hi. Uh, at the interview Hi, of the European Hypnosis Academy. Um, yeah. In September, you're coming to Belgium to do a, a training here. But first, maybe just introduce yourself to the students we he have here in Belgium and also to the students all around the world. Yeah, thank you. And first of all, I'm very excited to be part of this interview. And uh, good to see you again, Rob. Good to and, see you um, my name is Martin Caster Peterson. I've been doing hypnosis since I think it's actually 97 or 98. And uh, I run the Hyp Hypno Academy that is both based in Denmark, but also in Las Vegas, Nevada in the US. So uh, I've been traveling for the past 15 years all over the world, uh, teaching all my stuff. Uh, I've studied for many, many, many years with all the best people in the world and trying to figure out what kind of shelf I want to be at doing my own stuff. And just throughout since 13, I got four awards for my for my educations and my trainings. And I simply just enjoy it because basically what I do the way I think is I want to do as as little as possible, but I want the maximum effect. So all the stuff that a lot of people do just because they do it and just because they're being taught to do it that way doesn't mean it works. So I spend all my free time studying, researching, looking at reports, at science and trying to figure out if we collaborate between the body and the mind, how can we accelerate the outcome of a good positive hypnosis session? So that's basically what I do and uh, why I'm here, I guess. Okay. Uh, it's very interesting that you uh, have your training center also in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, so are you moved on a permanent base now uh, to Vegas or is that still a work in progress? Well, I'm, I'm traveling back and forth all the back time. I got my visas and stuff. Hmm. And uh, right now we're looking at moving permanently for next summer uh, because 80% of all my work is in the US anyway. So I'm traveling back and forth, if not once, maybe twice every single month. And that is quite a lot of, of, of time spending in an airplane. So yeah. right now, uh, it's and traveling jet lags. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of jet lags. <laughs> yeah. I got my way around it, though. But sometimes I get, you know, it's okay, just you like... You need to inform me about the way around uh, because I'm uh, yeah. I'm always having troubles with jet lags when flying to uh, yeah. the United yeah. States. So uh, I'm not looking forward to the jet lag in August for him. No. Old, so <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, it's uh, worse getting back, actually. So yeah. ah, For me, not. That's a strange thing. I'm totally opposite. Oh, wow. When I fly uh, to the United States, I always wake up like 3 in the morning every every morning. But coming back, I don't have uh, that big of a problem. So that's... Interesting. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm, it's usually uh, the opposite way. So. I know. I know. I know. So uh, <laughs> let's talk about uh, your training. Uh, so um, the title of the training is Trauma Collapse Technique. Uh, so can you inform uh, our students a bit about the goal of this technique? Yeah. Um, from the very beginning, when I started doing hypnosis, uh, my biggest fear with, uh, you know, with clients was, what if they had some severe trauma that I couldn't cope with? What if some of, some of that was so emotional that it will hit me on an emotional level too? And what if I did something wrong so I didn't get the full... Uh, you know, work needed. Uh, I didn't get the all the way down and, and grab it all out and, and remove it from my client. What if that happened? That was my biggest fear as a newbie within hypnosis. And I started with so many people trying to figure out how to deal with trauma. We all know the cinema and all those techniques and they might be okay. But in half of the cases I had with clients, uh, the outcome was not very good. And um, or it keep coming back somehow, and it wasn't the full idea. And I tried to figure out how to deal with that. So I met a couple of people who actually uh, had severe trauma, and we just, you know, played it out one, one day and trying to figure out how to deal with this without actually going into the trauma. Mm -hmm. 
And most people that I chatted with back then was said, well, you can't do that because you, you need to talk about the issues. You need to cry it out and you need to do all of that. Otherwise, the mind wouldn't cope with it. But here's my take on it. Everything that is connected to a trauma in most people's minds is not the real trauma. Everything they think about right now that something happened five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, is something their mind made up on a conscious level. It's based on influence. It's based on other people's opinion. It's based on how you conclude what the problem was in your own mind. That could be a thousand thoughts since when it really happened. So if we dive into the trauma thinking that all of that is reality, we have a huge issue because we will manifest the unreal realities to become real. And that will be a long way down into the depth of the trauma. And that will take a long, long time to actually solve. And, and that is how our creative mind are beautiful. But in this case, it's kind of like annoying, right? So I tried to figure out, well, what would happen if we actually diverted the way we go into trauma? What if we actually got above it or below it and then on the other side, and looked at it as, you know, as the real memory, what really happened. And even without going into the actual trauma, because the subconscious mind knows what happened anyway. It knows what it missed out. It, it got wiser since it happened, so it knows how to deal with it. But it's kind of like being locked into some kind of passive position because the, the conscious mind want to deal with it, and that's not the issue. So... If we access it in a different way and not really go into the trauma, we don't even have to talk about it, but allow the unconscious to deal with it and actually find the resources that's hidden within the trauma, because there's always resources. If we then go through everything a couple of times with the resources and reframe it in a way, and, and most people say, well, that's just diversion or it's reframing. Well, no, it's actually peeling off the layer of, of the false realities so they get into the core emotion and the core reality of what really happened. And uh, when that is done, that is within sometimes five minutes, sometimes 30 minutes. Then you start challenging all the disbeliefs they had uh, of the trauma when, you know, when they came to the session, mm -hmm. trying to see if you can connect with all that again. And it's gone. It's totally gone. And that is that is the key point of it. Because even if I talk to professionals today that has been doing this for 20, 30 years and who's really good at it, right? The one thing they will not do is talk about the issues after the session. And I don't do that in regular sessions. Like, so remember that pain that is gone? How does that feel right now? That would be so yeah. wrong to do something like that, right? You still but, want that cigarette? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and uh, you remember that great taste of the cigarette? No, <laughs> we, will, we won't do that. So what I'm doing instead is I'm, I'm, I'm asking my client to imagine all the stuff that happened in the past as something being solid, as a, as a massive form physiologically right there in front of them. And not just the, the stuff they can imagine, also the stuff that really happened, all the stuff they forgot about. All the stuff that they can on a conscious and a subconscious level imagine that would be a problem right now. And I just place that right there in front of them. And as the last step of the entire session, I will have them go through it and only feel the resources. And you might ask, so what if it goes wrong? Well, it never does, though. But what if they actually take the one step and everything they thought could be a problem is now banished? There's no way they can connect to the old belief of the trauma. It, it's impossible on a conscious level and an unconscious level. That means when they leave the office, even their creative mind has no chance of developing something new because we just did that. And if they're way more resourceful in the in a state of trance, that means they're way more creative in a state of trance. That means when they leave the office, it's way more impossible for them to actually go and create something that is a new trauma, a new problem, a new issue. So, so I'm going against the stream on this one, I know, because most therapists out there are so afraid of doing something like that, but it's the only way I can make sure that I had success with my client. And, and if I look at cases, it, I had some of the most severe 
traumatic cases from U.S. military uh, first responders that was given up on from psychiatrists, psychologists, uh, psychotherapists, or whatever, doctors even. And within one session, gone. And, and, and that is the interesting part because, you know, it's, it's a cliche right now. If a trauma can be created this fast, it can be removed this fast. Yes, it, it can because it's all about the neural uh, networks yeah. uh, in your brain. Yeah. But, but it has an echo within the body. So you need to make sure the body follows the process throughout the session. So it basically from playing around with it and from random cases, suddenly I sat there looking at a, a protocol, a structure, thinking, wow, th this, is, this is the setup. It has everything it needs to make sure that there's no failure and it will be a 99.9% uh, guarantee of success in any session if you just follow the basic steps. And everything else is, is conversation. Mm. And one very important thing, it's not scripted. That's it cannot good. be scripted. That's good. It's all a dialogue. It's all a conversation. Yeah. There's a structure to it. What to do next, and how to you know um, twist it and poke it or remove it or whatever. But it has to be a dialogue. So the two most the two most uh, feared things in therapy is random dialogue, and it is uh, facing the issues. Mm -hmm. We do that in these sessions, and you know what? You can be playful doing it. It's actually fun, and you will sit there watching your client, and they go, "Whoa, this this is easy." And even asking afterwards, "Was I hypnotized?" <laughs> and that is the fun part. I'm like, "Maybe you were, maybe maybe yeah, you yeah. weren't." But where's the issues right now? And they go, yeah. "I don't know." It's so, gone. if I understand correctly, uh, you even don't need like a deep trance to uh, to have good results because uh, I saw on your. Uh, um, on the description of the training that you can even do this technique with the eyes open. Yeah, yeah. that is, uh, and that's awesome, isn't it? Because I did believe though myself when I did uh, therapy uh, 10 years ago that you had to maintain a certain level of trance to be able to work with, you know, with clients on a deep traumatic level because somebody wrote a book on 32 levels and you need to be between 17 and 18 to make sure you can access trauma and, and I'm going to say something out loud right now, and you might bleep me out, but it's all bullshit. Yeah, because, <laughs> because if you know just a little bit about the brain, brain waves are not uh, solid or steady. So if you add, let's say, 12 hertz right now, and that's a good uh, level of trance, well, your client will stay there for a couple of seconds, maybe. And you will have theta, delta, beta, alpha, all going at the same time. So the question is, where are the, you the most dominant right now? And the only way to know that the client is suitable for dealing with trauma is, are they responding to your questions? Yeah. Are they having a dialogue with you? So, so to make it easy for, for me, instead of sitting there focusing, focusing so much on the induction, I just played around with my, my clients for a bit, and that is basically part of my structure right now, saying, so before we do any, anything that is hypnosis-related, let's do something fun. Just close your eyes for a brief moment. And that is the moment they actually go into trance. Mm. Because close your eyes for a brief moment, it's going to be fun. Uh, it's not hypnosis yet, so that means all the performance anxiety is getting you know pulled out of the situation and they go oh it's it's just fun right now okay i can do that and they slip straight into trance and i start doing all my stuff and even the guys who say well i don't want to do the you know close my eyes stuff because i don't i'm not sure what you're going to do with me i'm like okay that's okay you can keep your eyes open and when i start asking questions about uh you know past memories about good stuff and stuff like that they usually close their eyes anyway and as long as I, I take away the pressure of them trying to get a hypnotic experience, they already have it. So, so this is a technique that well, usually when I'm teaching it and there's no volunteer saying, well, I don't, I don't really want to go up there. I usually just go, well, you could just get up here and pretend. Just play along with me. Just pretend as you're a client, but it doesn't have to be personal. All right. <laughs> That's usually what I do. And they sit up there and within two minutes, open eyes, it's very personal and they get the job done right now because the subconscious mind wants to do it. Mm -hmm. And that is the difference, right? So yeah, you can do this in a random conversation. You can do this in a hypnosis setup. 
if you're any other kind of therapist, coach, just coach or whatever, if you're just coach, you can actually just apply this as a tool within your conversation with your client. And you know what? It doesn't even have to be a client or a professional setup because the thing I'm doing right now in the U.S. is actually I have this uh, uh, foundation called Hypnosis for Veterans that is, is purely aimed for families of veterans of the U.S. military or first responders, teaching them how to deal with trauma in daily life because, you know, within the family, they have severe issues. So this model is, is a complete structure for anyone who want to deal with traumas. And it doesn't need or require you to be a hypnotherapist. You don't have to be a licensed coach, a coach or whatever. I make sure that everything within this tool, within this class, is everything you need. You're not a hypnotherapist afterwards. You're not a coach afterwards, but you're a TCT practitioner. So you will know everything you need to know to put your client in trance and do the stuff that is connected to any kind of trauma and get them across the border and actually start enjoying life. And, and, and that's pretty powerful because a lot of licensed people out there don't even know how to do this. Mm. And they do all sorts of other modalities or structures or protocols or whatever. But this is basically what you need to do with any kind of trauma. And it works. I know it works. So it, it, we got so much proof of this and so much uh, science behind it that there's no way it will not succeed. Okay. Sounds great. So uh, what I understand is the benefits of this protocol is that uh, it, it's fast. It's, uh, it's easy to practice uh, with your client the moment you know the, the steps, you know the protocol. Uh, you don't have to learn uh, any script by heart. Uh, you can do it even in a non-hypnotic setting uh, because I have mm. some students who are not allowed to use the H word uh, mm. on their job, on their profession, so they can use it as well. Uh, yep. You can do it with the eyes open uh, and also people who are uh, who don't have a, a basis in hypnosis or, or, or yep. not, are not yet a hypnotist yet can join the training and learn this great tool. Absolutely. Okay, that sounds good. Let's say you're just a mom who never experienced anything within therapy, but, but you have a family member who needs help and the only one they trust is mom, right? Mom can attend the class and she will get taught anything she needs to know about trauma and she can get back home and deal with it because she's a TCT practitioner. So, so yeah, it's a, it's a powerful tool. It has bits and pieces of uh, hypnotherapy, professional hypnotherapy, conversational hypnotherapy, HNLP from John Oberdorf, uh, regular NLP, coaching techniques, body language skills, all of that compressed into a two-day training, but it's it's, it's set up in a way so it becomes playful. It's yeah. something that's called accelerated uh, brain-based learning mm -hmm. that will make sure that everybody gets it, even though the conscious mind goes out, oh, what just happened? Uh, when they put themselves in, into the situation, they know how to do it, and it's all hands-on. So mm -hmm. there's no hiding in the back saying, oh, I know it, but I don't want to do it. No, everybody gets to do it. They need the experience uh, themselves and they need the experience of doing it with someone else. So it's a lot of hands-on, and it will be very playful. And it's my job, by the way, to make sure that everyone who participates feels good about it, and they feel supported, because that is my most profound job as a teacher, to make sure that everyone actually feels good about it. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be a fun couple of days. Okay, uh, sounds great. So what are the, st the students getting? Do they get a manual? Is there uh, like an online library they can go on after the training? What are uh, the extras that's uh, in it? Yeah, I know you're asking because you know there's a quite, a, quite, quite a lot of extras. Uh, instead of just showing up and just throw a couple of terms uh, within the room, there's actually a, quite a big setup for this one. Uh, first thing is there will be an online pre-course, so people will get through some of the exercises, some of the techniques, so they kind of, they watched it. They, they know a little bit about it. There might be a lot of questions, but we'll do that on, uh, while in class. There'll be a manual, uh, and uh, some of the parts might be translated into uh, Belgian or Dutch beforehand. Otherwise, it might be uh, done that afterwards. That's a promise, but it will be in English. 
And I will explain all of it uh, down to earth kind of thing. So everybody knows it. No fancy pants uh, terms and expressions. It's all something that people will understand, right? Afterwards, they will, fir first of all, they will get certified. And that is not just like, you know, like a membership that you have to pay every year. No, that's a lifelong uh, membership of ISAT as a TCT practitioner. And also they will get full access to our students online forum that has all the exercises, everything from uh, from the manual that you need to know. There will be uh, an add-on of the entire training if they want it. And also there's a forum where you can actually discuss stuff with fellow uh, therapists or me or other teachers who know th this stuff. So if you need any uh, qu uh, questions answered, uh, go to the forum and ask the question. That's basically it. So there's a lot of stuff added on to it to make sure that people really get it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's the, and, and there's another thing though. There's also another thing because I trust this structure so much that if people really fall in love with it, which I expect them to do and they feel comfortable doing it and they think, well, I actually have a network where I want to push this into. I, I, I know people. There's actually uh, something that will be um, um, set on, on the actual training last day, uh, they will be offered if they want to become a TCT trainer, that is actually possible. And the way it's set up is it'll be a, kind of like a huge online module afterwards. There will be an online exam they have to do and there will be an online call with me where I have gone through a demo video they've done and then it's a half an hour conversation with me, making sure that they actually do get all the steps. Mm -hmm. When all that is done, they can go do their own trainings, right? It will require a little bit of experience and, you know, dealing with some clients. So we make sure that the quality level is high and, and the confidence level is high, but it's possible. And it's for some people, it's not for everyone, but it's for some people, but that will actually be an add-on. So you don't have to go to another trainer to become a trainer. It's all done online, uh, uh, live and authentic, and with a couple of calls with me to make sure that everything is okay. So it's kind of like a good deal, actually. Yeah. Okay, so there is a lot in for uh, for all the students uh, for this training. Um, so, um, is there anything else that you can say uh, to convince the students to take this training? Because we have a lot of trainees, of course. Some have to make choices. Why should they take this training? Well, based on everything I, I said so far, I don't think it's my job to convince people, but I want to I want to ask a couple of questions so they might reflect on those questions. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what if you could actually access anyone's trauma without actually accessing it and find the resources and change that to the better in their life? What if you can do all that that is based on on decades of therapy? But you can be taught that in two days, knowing everything you need to know because it's based on science. Is that something you would do? Is that something you will play around with and, and even feel confident while doing it? So I know there's a lot of techniques out there and, and that's, that's beautiful. And, and I, I even use some of the other ones too. But when I really want the job done, this is the one technique I always go to on the first attempt. And it's also the, the one technique that always succeeds in the first attempt. So, so if you have any empathy and you do care for people and, and you have 60 minutes in their presence, would you want to do this? Or do you want to try on a lot of other stuff and see maybe we succeed? I know what my choice would be. So it's, it's all there. There's no convincing because I'm pretty sure people watching right now, if they feel it and if they, uh, if, if they're in sync with everything I just uh, told them about and they feel just a little bit excited, well, this will be the training. And see, on, you know, on the other side, the price is so low anyway. So if they attempt and thinking, hmm, this might not be something for me, what if, they, what, what if it is? What if they get convinced on the training? And if they do not get convinced, and so far no one has not been convinced, uh, it's, it's just a small amount of, 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 of euros. And either way, you can pick pocket all the techniques out of the structure and you can use them in other settings too. So 
no no matter what it's a win 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 actually yeah yeah even even when you're not going to use the entire protocol there's always bits and pieces that you can use in, oh yeah uh, in whatever other uh, protocol that you're using so that that's the advice that i always yeah. uh, give my students there's always something in a training even if it's this little small uh technique or this little small detail that you learn that will uh pay for the training that that benefit yeah. the training so that's uh, okay so uh we are really uh, really looking forward on having you here for the first time uh, in uh, belgium at the european hypnosis academy um i will see you in uh, in live in vegas uh in oh, yeah. august i think yeah you you will be there uh Absolutely. so at hypnotholds of course so if there are uh, any uh, people watching this and not uh, yet signed up for hypnotholds go there and uh it, it's three days of fun uh, together with uh, peers. Everybody has the same interest there and uh, they all work on, on, on different uh, techniques, different levels. They have different opinions, but it's really, really nice to be together with uh, people that are in the same business. They are the same minds and uh, it's fun. To it's like a huge family. Hypnosis. Yeah, it's a big family. Yeah, it's a big family and it's always uh, a lot of fun. So, uh, Martin, thank you very much for uh, this interview. Uh, there are still early bird uh, places left. I think uh, it's until 19th of July that the early bird price uh, is still on. And then it goes to the, the normal price. Uh, so be sure to sign up for this training. And uh, Martin, I see you in Vegas. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Bye.